Bo DeMeo versus Marvel. Y'all, this has gotten way spicier than I ever thought it would be. Um, now, here's the thing. Just to give people an idea of where we've come and what's going on, Bo DeMeo was brought on to work with Marvel and create X-Men 97. So he did that. X-Men 97 was a hit. I think it's still currently 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, and this show, I mean, we've covered it here on the channel. It is, he did phenomenal work. Now, for some reason, Bo DeMeo got fired. And this is after he wrote two seasons for Marvel, right? Marvel Studios. Now, the big mystery was, what did Bo DeMeo do? Everybody was wondering, what did he do, man? What happened? Marvel didn't say nothing. And here's the thing. We read different articles over time. Bo wasn't saying nothing on social media. Marvel was like, ah, you know what? Bo did a great job. He did this. And, and then they kind of left it at that. They never spoke on what actually happened. And what made it crazy was the fact that he got fired right before the show came out. So, and I've talked about this too, when he got fired, he deleted all of his uh, Instagram, like all his images, social media, he stopped it, right? And I think he just joined Twitter or just got active on Twitter once the show came on. Now, once that happened, you started to see him talking about the show, which made sense. This is what he created, right? So every week, Bo would just be talking about the show, whatever. It is what it is. Now, rumors started to pop up. And rumors were saying like, hey, Bo DeMeo might have actually got fired because one rumor was that he was a jerk to work with. Whatever. It's not a crime. It's Hollywood. You know, another rumor was that somebody at Disney probably saw some of his uh, OnlyFans stuff, which, according to other sources, you know, I ain't go watch, look at it. It was non explicit. So he might have been posting things, but it wasn't like X rated from what I understand. So some people probably thought like, hey, man, you working for Disney. Like, you can't be posting stuff like that anyway. Maybe. But nothing was hardcore right and nothing came from marvel so time has gone on the show finished off everybody is praising it people are like yo let's go with season two and i think we've all kind of talked about how season two even though bo was not going to be a part of it he at least wrote the script so with him writing the script it was kind of like okay listen at least we still gonna keep some of the seasoning on this show, you could bring somebody else in and direct the episode. It'd be fine. Season three, we'll worry about that later. But then we found out that Marvel did hire a new writer. Now, this writer um, was going to uh, take over and he was going to write um, season three. So that was the questionable part, right? But there were rumors. There have been rumors that Marvel is actually looking at rewriting some aspects of season two. And that was kind of curious, because I'm like, wait a minute. This man Bo DeMeo just gave y'all some hot fire. Why would you go unseason his food after he done cooked it to perfection, presumably? And now things are starting to fall in place, right? So remember I told you, X-Men 97, it has a a hundred percent Rotten Tomatoes and all that stuff. And by the way, remember that episode? Remember it? It got nominated for an Emmy, right? So the question is, if you get nominated for an Emmy, shouldn't the showrunner participate? Wouldn't the guy who literally wrote it, produced it, created it, should he not be a part of that celebration? So this is what was asked to Bo DeMeo. Yo, congrats on the nomination for your show that you created. Are you going to be a part of this? Bo DeMeo took to Twitter and said to those asking, Marvel Disney has not reached out to arrange my attendance to the Emmys for the show I created. We shall, we shall see. My team has reached out. So this is an interesting question, though. Because the question is, you know, if you did create something from scratch, it's not like you were 
you know, it's not like Marvel, uh, um, you know, directed it and, or, or like had a script and you came in and touched it up. We're not talking about that. We're talking about like you came in with an original pitch, everything you see and all that stuff in X-Men 97, the ideas he came up with. Now, obviously, it was a team effort. Other people did it. But you wouldn't have those other teams if he did not come up with the concept and guide everyone along the way. And I was having a conversation with a friend of mine, and he was like, yo, would you invite your ex to your party? And I was like, you know what? I understand that, but I don't feel like that's the best analogy. I feel like this is a situation of more like your baby daddy, your baby mama. Yay, maybe y'all got some beef. It's understandable. Things don't always work out. But you do have a kid in the middle. And season one of X-Men 97, that's their that's their child. That's like their graduation. You're not going to invite the baby mama or the baby daddy to the graduation. And, and let's just say, you know what I'm saying? Like, if Bo was the daddy and Marvel was the mama or whatever, let's just say they were both there together. It was working out for years. It was good. It was a good thing. And then they broke up later. Personally, I think that Marvel could and should have just invited him at least for that one season, at least. Now there's more information to come, but I think that it was reasonable to believe that for something you created and was the showrunner, meaning you're the top dog, you could at least get some recognition because literally the award is going towards your work. That's just my thoughts. And Bo DeMeo felt similarly. He said here, I created and produced it uh, and was the entire creative point and leader on every aspect and stage or production. This is his thing. So fast forward, and we get to about yesterday, the day before, and Bo posts this. Finally, I'm so grateful to have worked on X-Men 97, collaborating with some amazingly talented folks. Creating this revival was a dream come true. Uh, to The support fans have shown is so touching. However, I felt it pressing for me to speak up in the wake of leaving the show. So he posts this image, and... It's an image of, you know, fan art of him as Cyclops. He posted this, uh, I think, back in June. This was an Instagram post or whatnot. Um, you know, it was for Pride Day or whatnot. All right. Um, so after posting this, he goes on to say, above is X-Men fan art that I posted on Instagram for Gay Pride in June. On June 13th, Marvel sent a letter notifying me that they stripped my season two credits due to the post. So because of that Cyclops post back in June, Marvel was like, uh, -uh we, that we're not giving you credit for season two. Now keep in mind, he already wrote season two. Season two was done. It just needed to be polished up and animated and so on. But because he posted that, Later on, he got that information, that letter from Marvel. So the question kind of comes up, and it's like, wait a minute, because something's not adding up. If you follow Bo DeMeo, you know he is an outwardly gay man, okay? This guy posts himself working out. He's allergic to shirts. It happens, okay? He works out. He's posting pictures of himself all the time. That picture of him as Cyclops is probably by far the least problematic issue that this man has ever posted, right? But people have brought up, rightfully so, he's posted other stuff like this before. Matter of fact, he posted a similar picture like that almost like months before that. So the question is like, yo, it can't be just the fact that you posted that image that now Marvel's like, nah, we, we not giving you credit. Because keep in mind, and some people were getting this mixed up, he did not get fired for posting that image. He got fired way before that. Which means something else happened that that maybe that specific post triggered. So there's clearly more to the story here. But it's wild to me that they're taking away his credits. So they're basically saying when we see uh, season two, you probably won't see Bo DeMeo's name up there. Keep in mind what I just said earlier. They hired another person already. And that other person is probably watering down everything Bo did. And they're probably changing stuff up. So that probably has fed into this, right? 
but it's still not adding up. It's still not adding up. So Bo also goes on to say, uh, sadly, this is the latest in a troubling pattern I suffered through while working on X-Men 97 and Blade. Keep in mind, he did work on Blade too. And he says, I'll have more to say soon, but must take a step back from social media to find a safer place for me to be out, proud, and nerdy. Stay tuned. Okay. So the troubling pattern that he's referring to, if you recall, this is what we just got done talking about with Disney with the whole, you know, allergy situation lawsuit. So once this news kind of came out, this is where Bo was really feeling some type of way and was just like, see, this is what's going on. Um, they are, you know, this is the pattern with Disney, right? So we have some more information because Marvel was like, nah, what you're not going to do is talk about us and be reckless on social media and have us not say nothing. Now, I want y'all to keep something in mind. Usually, when we talk about drama, it's usually, even if it's Marvel related, usually it comes from Disney. But this time, Marvel's getting involved. Marvel's issuing a, a, a comment at this point. This is a big difference. Again, Disney, they have some good stuff and they got some bad stuff. But the fact that Marvel's actually being like, hold up, wait a minute. This is big. So let's see what Marvel had to say here instead. So Marvel clapped back and they said that Bo DeMeo's behavior was the cause of his firing and for him losing his credits. Marvel said Mr. DeMeo was terminated in March of 2024 following an internal investigation given the egregious nature of the findings. We severed ties with him immediately and he has no further affiliation with Marvel. Yikes! Yikes! Egregious? The findings? Now, I have said before that y'all know, after when we were watching X-Men 97, and I made a video about it, I was not doing a whole campaign, but I did put it out there, and I said, listen, Marvel, y'all going to have to have a come to Jesus moment and you are going to have to rehire Bo DeMeo unless he did something illegal. Now, if he was cussing y'all out, if he was being a jerk, whatever. But if he did something illegal, then okay. But egregious, that sounds like something problematic. Let's get some more details because we do have details. Sources say that following his exit, in a, an agreement was reached between the two parties over the issue of tweeting about the show, something that DeMeo had continued to occasionally do. In light of the breaches, his credit for season two was removed, while no details of the cause of the uh, termination or the internal reviews have surfaced. Sources say it involved sexual misconduct. Yikes. Yikes. So first of all, you have the situation of, and this makes sense, right? If you got fired, if you've been let go, they probably signed an NDA and they were like, yo, we're not going to talk about you. You don't talk about us. Totally makes sense, right? But Bo been out there in them, in them Twitter streets. Bo has been out there on them social medias and he was putting a lot of stuff out. Now, he wasn't talking about bad about Marvel or nothing. Now, he would kind of say things like, mm, I don't know why Marvel would do this. I can't speak to this. So he'd be vague about it. But he kept tweeting and talking about the show. Now, I can understand how Marvel might be like, hey, man, we told you to stop talking about the show because we not together no more. Could you imagine breaking up with somebody and they still go on social media posting pictures about the time y'all went on vacation last year? That's the way it kind of feels like. So now, as you know, you're probably trying to move on with your life. You're probably trying to, you know, get back in the dating life. But you can't do that because your ex is posting y'all as if y'all still go together. But y'all don't. So it sounds like 
that was probably one of the reasons why his extra post of him as Cyclops probably has nothing to do with him being gay or nothing. But they were like, yo, we told you to stop posting. And maybe that was the trigger. Maybe. Oh, but sexual misconduct. What? What? Let's keep going. It says here, DeMeo was an avid user, social media user, during his tenure at Marvel, sharing X-Men tidbits, as well as shirtless pics of himself and even running the non-explicit uh, OnlyFans account. But the reveal of an internal investigation points to deeper issues. This is the problem. It's the internal investigation. And, of course, Bo DeMeo did come out to respond to this article. And he said, the truth will be revealed after their Disney Plus disaster that we just talked about. Marvel wants to mislead with al alleged contract breaches over tweets. It's tragic. It's come to this. But unsurprising, stay tuned. So. You know, Bo is like, yo, Marvel going Marvel, Disney going Disney. And there's a pattern to this. But here's the problem. We got rumors from sources. I would say that uh, the Snyder is a pretty reliable-ish, you know, source. So take it with a grain of salt. But we have seen that he's been right more often, I think. So I, that's the only reason I'm bringing this up. But apparently, Snyder has the deets on what went down with this sexual misconduct. And if this is true, yikes. It says here, Bo DeMeo allegedly sent nudes of himself in sexually suggestive hero poses to several young male staffers working on X-Men 97, saying that they could use it as inspiration. He also allegedly groped an assistant multiple times and emotionally, physically abusive to other staffers. Welp. I mean, these are rumors. They both were reached out for comment. This is allegedly. If this is true. If it's true, because we don't know Bo DeMeo's side. And with anybody. You're innocent until proven guilty. But if it's true. Oh, this man ain't working no more. At Mar like, that's... All right, bro. You gotta go. If it's true. Now, he did say that, you know, he was gonna tell his side. There's always two sides to the story, and then there's the truth. So I'm more curious to hearing what he has to say, because these are a hell of an allegation to levy against somebody. And as I mentioned before, Marvel does not usually come out with stuff like this. Marvel usually does not beef with people like this. Disney will, because Disney's the parent boss company. Marvel don't really do that. So I'm, I'm, I'm almost inclined to believe that Marvel feels like they are really right about this decision. And if this is also true, Bo, I need you to stop, bro. Like, you were sitting here tweeting and stuff as if these allegations wasn't, like, like they didn't have that draw four up their sleeve. You didn't know who that was messing with? Like, so, we have one more clap back because while Marvel clap back, Bo DeMeo is going to clap back with his lawyer because now he has a new lawyer, um, Brian Friedman. I think he was dealing with Johnny Depp. I think, don't quote me on that. But he said, 
Having much experience with Disney, the playbook is always the same, family-friendly on the outside, but secretly attempting to plant illegal, unconscionable items and contracts that silence the truth and stop the employee customer from asserting basic constitutional rights. Hold on, wait a minute, sir. Excuse me, Mr. Lawyer, sir. The, the constant tweeting seems to be the least of your concerns. I think you need to address the allegations. I think those are way more problematic and they're probably more important for you to fight against than him tweeting a couple X-Men pictures here and there. Just non-legal opinion. He says here, as we will explain through detailed examples, which we will roll out in the detail, in detail, one by one, Disney's model is very clear and a repetitive illegal pattern. Once it gets challenged or exposed, the gaslighting and redirection of the blame toward anyone willing to tell the truth starts through an internal, uh, international well-oiled publicity machine. He says here, Bo DeMeo wants nothing from Marvel Disney except the truth. The last part in the indication, uh, the last part is an indication that legal action may be coming soon. I didn't hear you say one thing about them allegations, though. I mean, to pivot from a contract dispute of tweeting to egregious behavior and potential sexual misconduct, that's a hell of a pivot. That's a hell of a pivot. That's like saying, like, man, you was jaywalking, man. I'm going to arrest you. Nah, uh, by the way, you raped somebody. What? Those are two. A speeding ticket to murder? Those are, that's a big pivot. <sighs> Listen, I'm going to take the same road that I've taken with other celebrities in the past with legal issues. I'm going to wait till all the information comes out and see what comes of it because, oh my God. Oh my gosh. So that is your over encompassing. At least now you got the most of the story so far. This still is going to be a developing story. Uh, with Bo DeMeo versus Marvel. Um, definitely unprecedented from what I've seen or that I can recall. Um, but you guys let me know. How do you feel about these rumors, about the allegations? How do you feel about Marvel saying something? Do you feel like Bo DeMeo is being treated unfairly? Again, we can only go off of the information we know now, right? Like what we know now might change completely different, something different, you know, next week or the next day. We don't know, right? But whatever you think, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. This was just a segment of one of my live chats. And if you're interested in joining in on the next one, be sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications for more. I've got more videos and reviews to do for you all. And until next time, I'll see you all later.